You guys enjoyed a lot my video with the top 5 infantry marches with the infantry's fortress and you asked for a cavalry and archers videos as well, so I'm here to do that. Today we will be talking about the top 5 cavalry pairings for the open field and suggest you the best 5 marches setup in case you want to rock 5 cavalry marches on the field. Together with us, for a short interview at the end of this video, there will be a representative of the Cavalry Stable community, a Discord community fully focused on Cavalry. Without further ado, let's speak about it. Hey, welcome back to my channel! Today we will speak Cavalry, shall we? Same disclaimer that I've made for the top 5 infantry video. Using a single troop type on the field is never going to give you the same benefits of differentiating your marches. For this reason, when we will speak about the 5 marches setup for a cavalry main player, that will be me and the cavalry stable idea for the best solution in that specific context. But it doesn't mean that one is the best setup in general for the open field. If you want to know which, in my opinion, are the best 5 marches to use together on the open field, check out this guide, card up on the top. Like for the previous video, we will start from the bottom going up. In position number 5, we have the last generation cavalry commander Zhang Yu, with YSG as secondary commander. Yes, YSG. This combo is a concentrate of damage and AoE and many cavalry players have been using it on the open field with great success, racking up kills during KVKs. Nothing much to say, this combo is fully offensive, if you get focused down you are actually pretty squishy, but hey, this is cavalry, you can try and run away when you are in a difficult position. A special mention still in position number 5 goes to Genghis Khan and William. Many players dislike Genghis Khan, but among cavalry players, Genghis is still a popular commander. This combo has not the same capabilities of Zhang Yu paired with William, but in certain situations it can hit super hard, for example for a quick sniping of the enemy marches returning home after a fight. The quick pacing of the skill cycle of this combo will consent you to burn down the remainders of your enemies. Both these combos need to be very careful in a murderable and that's probably why we have them positioned at number 5. Position number 4 goes to Attila and Takeda. Attila and Takeda is notoriously a very slow killing march, but still a killing machine. We don't need to present this combo. They do not deal any skill damage, as you would expect from cavalry, they base all their power on attack and counterattacks in combination with debuffs. You guys already know my opinion about this march, but we need to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Free to play and low spender players, like I said many times, should be the ones using this march on the field, because they will still get decent trades not having the same technology of the opponents, especially in the Season of Conquest KVKs. Boost this combo up with the best defense and health pieces of equipment you can and you will be good to go. On the podium, in position number 3 and the bronze medal, we find Zhang Yu once again with Saladin or Genghis Khan as secondary commanders. Zhang Yu and Saladin is a much tankier and supportful option for Zhang Yu, balancing in part XY's offensive capabilities with some defensive skills, in particular the skill damage reduction. Genghis Khan, on the other side, will bring the rage requirement of the active skill cycle of this combo down to 750 rage, the lowest among every combo in the entire game. While Zhang and Saladin has some great use in a murderable, Zhang Yu and Genghis is one of the best marches, if not the best march, to snipe lonely enemies out of cities or flags and deal some quick and painful damage. Two different combos, two different uses, both deserving of a number 3 position. In position number 2, with a silver medal, we got Saladin and William. This combo was my top favorite for cavalry before the introduction of Zhang Yu in the game, in fact I rated it the best open field match by utility in my first open field rating a few months ago. This march is tanky, is fast enough and has a lot of utility, especially thanks to William and his defense and rage buffs, which I remember are passive and will stack with any other active effect, as I have explained in other occasions, and honestly, 
feels great to play in open field, this is one of the least flawed cavalry marches in the game, highly suggested. And free-to-play and low spenders can really consider using this combo with both the commanders at 5551, saving 620 gold sculptures in total, which is never bad. I personally have my own Saladin at 5551, while my William is maxed out. For further info about investments, check my investment guide. Finally, we are at the top of the list. The gold medal for the first position is awarded to Zhang Yu and William. Yes, I know, this choice may be a little bit controversial, especially with Saladin and William being in position number two. Many players think that this march is not worth to use in open because it gets focused too quickly and you die too quickly. I like to think the opposite way. If this march wasn't on the field, people would focus on something else. The threat that this march poses in open is so high that players must focus it down. Not having that is just not possible in the current meta. Look at all the top teams during KVK or Ark of Osiris or even Champions of Olympia. The second commander you will probably see the most in those top fights other than Guan Yu is Zhang Yu. This is the only cavalry march which has a double AOE, a fan-shaped one for XY and a rectangular one for William, and both those AOE are very powerful. In a full damage setup, players should really consider having this combo. A viable alternative is Zhang Yu with Chandra Gupta secondary. Chandra doesn't have AOE capabilities, but thanks to some tankiness and the health debuffs provided by him, your Zhang can stick a bit longer in open and still have excellent results. More than being a shared first place though, this is an alternative option. To quickly recap, in position number 5 we have XY with YSG, with a special mention to Genghis Khan and William. In position number 4 we find Attila and Takeda. Number 3 we have XY and Saladin or Genghis Khan. The silver medal for position 2 goes to Saladin and William. And at the top of the list with the gold medal for position number 1 we have XY and William with XY and Chandra as alternative option. Let's now address the best 5 marches setup for a player that wants to run only cavalry in open field. According to our opinions, shared with the cavalry stable and some other pro cavalry players, the 5 marches you should use if you are a cavalry main are XY and Yadviga, Attila and Takeda, Chandra Gupta and William, Saladin and YSG, Genghis Khan and Minamoto. A valuable alternative will be stepping out of the 5 marches setup and have a 4 marches setup with Trajan and Edelflet instead of Genghis Khan and Minamoto, in order to have a strong supporter for your other marches and removing from the equation a liability, which is a squishy glass cannon combo such as Khan and Minamoto. Every single one of those marches has a purpose. XY and Yadviga, Saladin and YSG, Chandra Gupta and William will be your damage dealers. William behind Chandra Gupta serves the purpose of keeping another AoE on the field in case your Zhang gets focused. Genghis Khan and Minamoto isn't the best solution, probably we will have a better combo once the new generation cavalry commanders will be released. Trajan with Adelflat is one of the best alternatives for this setup. Attila and Takeda is your tanky cavalry and a bit of a forced choice in all the cavalry setups. As for the 5 marches infantry setup, the cavalry meta is still not quite ready to embrace a mono-type philosophy of playing. As I said, in a few months more cavalry commanders will be introduced and the pairings will evolve further. I'll make sure to keep you guys posted with an update video. So with us today there is Jake, the founder of the cavalry stable. Hey Jake, welcome to the channel. Thanks for being here and for taking time to speak to us. Hello Wick, thank you for having me on the channel. All right, I'll shoot the first question. Which are the benefits of using five cavalry marches in open and which are the disadvantages? With a pure cavalry march setup, the most distinct advantage would be your speed advantage over most other marches in the field. Alex being the most obvious exception. Using all cavalry would also allow you to take full advantage of all current buffs you have available to you, being your city theme buffs as well as your civilization buffs. Some of the disadvantages would be how frequently cavalry commanders are targeted in the field, as well as their lack of defense. Some examples of this would be commanders such as Zhang Yu, Saladin, William, and Chandra. Next to Guan, these are some of the most popular targets in large open field fights. Interesting. 
And what about the civilizations, in your opinion? Which are the recommended civilizations for a player who is using, let's say, at least three cavalry marches on the field? For a player using at least three cavalry, I would say Germany or Byzantium would be my two best choices. For a developing player, such as myself, I am only 57 million power, I use Germany for the troop training buff. It's invaluable when I am training more troops to fight in the field. After reaching higher power levels and not needing to train as frequently, I would consider switching to Byzantium for the 15% hospital buff capacity as well as the extra 5% cavalry defense. Wonderful. Germany and Byzantium, pretty solid choices to me. Let's now speak about X, Y and William. I have personally spoken a lot about it. Many say it's a double-edged sword because this combo gets focused rapidly. I mean, I do think that, even if the value of having this combo is considerable, if it wasn't a threatening pair, people will not try to kill it as soon as possible. Which are your thoughts, Jake? I share your opinion. I think X, Y, and William together are very dangerous in the open field. The debuffs that they bring as well as the substantial skill damage are well worth the gamble of bringing them to large-scale field fights, especially when they are controlled correctly, keeping them from being swarmed or overextending, for instance. The, as I said, the results are well worth the gamble. Cavalry commanders are not very famous for their defensive capabilities. That's why probably they are heavily compensated with the equipment being so focused on mitigation factors like defense and health, where do you see the cavalry meta going in the next future? This is hard to tell. My answer to you before Yadwiga came out would have been another open field fighter or another rally leader meta shifting commander. But with the introduction of Yadwiga as well as Salad and YSS being brought on to gar lead garrisons, now I think my best guess would be to bring in a second garrison commander to assist Yadwiga or bring in another rally lead as well. Um, so have a garrison and a rally lead commander as the next option. Yeah, I do think that another rally command, we might see another rally commander coming up soon. And your guess about a new garrison commander is actually very, very intriguing. Finally, a more personal question to you. Which is your favorite cavalry combo so far and why? For this question, I have two answers for you. My two favorite marches that I use are Saladin William and Attila Takeda. I know a lot of people are tired of hearing about Attila Takeda, but both of these marches allow a smaller player. As I said earlier, I am only 57 million power. So it allows a smaller player such as myself to participate in large open field fights against stronger players with substantial crystal tech and still enjoy the fun of field fighting in Rise of Kingdoms as well as not instantly filling my hospital. Well, I'm not tired of hearing about Attila and Takeda because in this guide, and we also spoke about Attila and Takeda, and in my videos, I always say that I hate Attila Takeda as a march being brought to the field from a high power player. But I do believe that it is most beneficial to low spenders and even free to play to try and compete a little bit and have a bit of fun when they are field fighting against players with a high crystal tech, which is always a problem. So I do tend to agree with your opinion. In this case, Attila and Takeda, especially for players like yourself, it's a very good asset. All right, I deeply thank you for being with us today and for dedicating us a few minutes of your time. We all wish you a great day. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Before concluding the video, a quick shout out to Jake's Cavalry community. It is called the Cavalry Stable and you will find the link to join their Discord in the description down below. If you are interested in talking cavalry with pro cavalry players, I strongly suggest you join them. Thank you all for being here. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content and I will see you on the next one. Ciao!